George M. Bailey, Lieutenant Commander, USN, retired. Now, went from that ship to the USS Willie Wood, DDR 715. I went aboard as the uh, gunnery officer, and uh, they said, no, why don't you take over chief engineer? which was probably one of my lowest grades of OCS, but I guess that's how they could do it. And uh, so I spent the first three months getting things that engineers had been doing, but was part of the gunnery officer's job. Got that all squared away, and uh, the captain really liked that, and he said, you did a really good job down there, Mr. Gunnery Officer. <laughs> uh, so I was the Gunnery Officer, and I was also the navigator on the ship for a while. But uh, that again, it was a very good ship, good people. Uh, sailors are good. And well, I'll tell you, she's beautiful. She looked what a camp combat ship should look like. I mean, there was guns. Well, I like that. That's, I can do this. And uh, as I said, I was the gun boss. I was chief engineer. And that's when the uh, Russians would play games with us. Be gone along at night, go someplace off Sicily, and want to come out of nowhere and see if he could get you to do something wrong. So, it was an interesting time. Uh, usually a destroyer, something like that. Probably a thousand yards. Comes steaming at you, and you, they wait to see if you, if you break. And if you do, then you're in the wrong. No, we just weren't supposed to let them get too close. Mostly uh, European, except uh, like Turkey. That's either Asian or not, <laughs> how you look at it. But, uh, our ports were all European, and they, most of them were very good. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, there was an arcade in, in Naples, all glass things up the ceiling, and they were gone when I was there the first time, and they were all fixed. In fact, I met, met Lucky Luciano there. I think I was starved for any American conversation. Yeah. I would just sit down, shoot the breeze what's happening, who's doing what to whom. Well, as a captain used to say, his part of the ship was on the weather decks up. Mine was everything below. Uh, it was a very responsible job. And I got into some trouble with it. I had an admiral tell me what happened to, I shut down an engine and he high-lined over to the ship he said, I want you to start that engine. I said, if you'll write that, that down on paper and I will try and kill as many, the left, as little people as possible, I'll start the engine. He decided not to write that down. Of course, it didn't do me any good. <laughs> I wasn't his favorite. But uh, it was just, in my professional estimation, it was dangerous, and I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I have a few problems with people in charge. Luckily, my CO had been an engineer. He didn't check on what I was doing, and 
he backed me up with everything I did. And that happened again in, in Norfolk. And get that man up, I don't want to talk to him. And I told him the same story, you want to kill people, go ahead. But that doesn't look good on your fitness report. And that leads on to the, well, let's see, I, I think I went ashore. Yeah, I went ashore. I'm trying to think of a sink land fleet. Yeah, I guess it was a sink land fleet, and I was the uh, spectrum manager for the Atlantic fleet and the west, west western Atlantic. And that was a good job because my old captain from the Willie Wood was also on the staff. And he was the junior guy in his office, and I was the senior guy in my office. So he could come over and have coffee with me without a problem. <laughs> if I went over to his office, he'd have to get the coffee. <laughs> and he was a very good friend, J.W. Perkins. But, uh, they kept me there because they gave me a job of briefing the Admiral. And uh, evidently they liked the way I was doing it. So I had orders to a cruiser and they cut them away.